Welcome to another edition of Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. I'm once again doing a variety of different voices unless someone complains. Okay, here's the lineup for this week. The news, of course, Community Bulletin Board and 55 Plus News, a report on the most recent town hall meeting, also a trio of out and about stories. That's the show. Now, here's the social media reminder. You can watch us on YouTube at Arlington Weekly News and the number one, also on Facebook, and you can listen on the radio at WERA 96.7 FM. Now, on to the news. As of Sunday evening, July 12th, reports show the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Arlington had exceeded 2,600. The following announcement was received last Thursday from Arlington County. Arlington Cultural Affairs will receive a $35,000 Artworks Award from the National Endowment for the Arts, a portion of the more than $84 million in grants recently approved as part of the NEA's second major funding announcement for fiscal year 2020. Arlington Cultural Affairs will use the grant to support a multicultural artist residency project serving the Columbia Hills and Columbia Grove affordable housing communities in the county. With its partner for this project, Arlington Partnership for Affordable Housing, the county will select an artist through a curated process to develop participatory arts activities for diverse student populations, including Arabic, Amharic, Spanish, and English speakers. Activities will culminate in the creation of community-generated public art. Also on Thursday, July 9th, the following message arrived at 11.52 a.m. Notice is hereby given that the County Board of Arlington County, Virginia, on Thursday, July 9th, 2020, at 5 o'clock p.m., or as soon thereafter as matters may be heard, after the CIP work session, will hold a special meeting for the purpose of convening a closed session in accordance with and for the purposes authorized by law. The County Board special meeting will be conducted using electronic means. The public may attend the virtual convocation of the closed meeting and virtual certification of the closed meeting via live stream on the County's website and on cable stations Comcast Xfinity 25 or 1085 HD and Verizon Fios 39 and 40. The closed meeting itself will not be open to the public. That's the end of the notice. Five hours doesn't really constitute much advance notice, which is bad enough. However, anyone who did manage to tune in would have been presented with a still screen image with no audio. So much for transparency in government. On Friday, July 10th, Arlington County provided a link to the 2019 annual report from the Arlington County Police Department. In his introductory letter, Police Chief Jay Farr included the following statement, and we quote, Crime remains historically low. However, we experienced an overall increase in 2019, which was marked particularly by vehicle-related property crimes. The work of officers to proactively patrol Arlington's neighborhoods to identify and prevent criminal activity and conduct follow-up investigations resulted in a number of significant arrests. We also recognize the important role communication plays in keeping our community informed and engaged. In July 2019, we joined police departments throughout the country in a public safety campaign aimed at promoting crime prevention strategies to reduce and prevent thefts from vehicles and homes. The campaign, known as the 9 p.m. routine, encourages residents to conduct security checks in their homes and vehicles each evening to ensure their property is secure. This is one of the many ways we're working collaboratively with the community to address concerns of crime and safety. Later in his message, Mr. Farr went on to state, and we quote again, the tragic death of Mr. George Floyd has sparked a national conversation around policing in America. We are committed to continuing to work with the community to hear your concerns, build a diverse workforce, train our officers to de-escalate situations, and ensure accountability and transparency. 
I can assure you that each and every day, our officers work to provide the level of service that is not only expected, but reflected by this community." End quote. The complete report can be found on the Arlington County website. Another item, Tacus P. Carantonis, elected to the Arlington County Board in a special election on July 7, 2020, was sworn in at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, July 14th, in a virtual ceremony. Clerk of the Circuit Court of Arlington, Paul Ferguson, officiated. The swearing-in took place virtually to protect public health during the COVID-19 pandemic emergency. The public was invited to watch the swearing-in live-streamed on the county website or on Arlington Television's cable channels, Verizon Fios channels 39 and 40, or Comcast Xfinity 25, or HD 1085. Now it's time for Community Bulletin Board, also known as CBB. Hi, and welcome to Community Bulletin Board. This first announcement is listed as plain air painting, but underneath it just says, show your creative side as we paint al fresco on easels. So, what is it? Plain air refers to either the actual practice of painting outdoors or conveying the impression that you did so. Al fresco is not the proprietor of a really good pizza joint, which is a shame, but an adjective that can refer to either doing something in the open air or eating something in the open air. Painting with all edible materials could satisfy both definitions, but that's probably not what this particular event is about. It's coming up on Tuesday, July 21st, from 10 o'clock to 11.30 a.m. at Long Branch Nature Center at Glen Carlin Park. That's at 625 South Carlin Springs Road in Arlington. Now here's an event for kids between the ages of 11 and 18. It involves taking their gaming outdoors, and it includes free interactive games for youth and teens. The games will be set up in a fun party atmosphere. That's on Wednesday, July 21st, 2020, from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at Alcova Heights Park, 901 South George Mason Drive. Rec on Wheels is back with their usual lineup of themed recreation activities for youth and teens. That's coming up on Thursday, July 22nd, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. at Tyrol Hill Park, 5101 7th Road South. Finally, Here's an online event for families. It's a chance to journey back in time to learn about how Native American tribes of the Mid-Atlantic lived throughout the changing seasons. No registration is required. Just visit the Long Branch Nature Center's Facebook page to tune in. All of these events are free, and you can register online for the first three at the county's Parks and Recreation website. And now it's time for 55 Plus News. Howdy, and welcome to 55 Plus News. If you want to discover more about your genealogy, but don't know where to begin, you can watch a three-part video series in which 55 Plus member and genealogy expert Susan Court shares information to get you started. Watch part one, part two, and part three on the DPR 55 Plus YouTube channel at your leisure, then participate in a question and answer session with Susan each week. RSVP to Lila Pig for the Zoom links to the sessions. The next session will take place on Wednesday, July 22nd from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock p.m. Then there's another session of bocce, that ball tossing thing. You can join your friends and neighbors for a casual game on Thursday, July 23rd, from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock a.m. at Highview Park, 1945 North Dinwiddie Street. Also, 55 plus members can meet in one of Arlington's parts for fellowship while knitting, crocheting, sewing, or engaging in other needle crafts. That's on Monday, July 27th, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon at Virginia Highlands Park, 
That's 1600 South Hayes Street. Finally, here's something about concussions and older adults. Kelly Wilson is a doctor of physical therapy and representative of Innova Sports Medicine Concussion Program. The organization provides services to both the novice athlete and professional sports teams. It also provides services to older adults and others who have been involved in motor vehicle collisions and falls involving head trauma. Kelly will present the basics on concussion rehabilitation, including answers to some common questions. That's coming up on Thursday, July 23rd from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. It's an online event and registration is required. Go to https colon slash slash arlingtonva.libcal.com slash event slash six six three one zero three four. The Arlington Virtual Town Hall meeting for July 10th began at 12.30 p.m. Attendees included Katie Crystal, Matt DeFerranti, Dr. Ruben Varghese, Dr. Aaron Miller, and Assistant County Manager Jim Schwartz. Lisa Fikes from Volunteer Arlington was a special guest. Everyone spoke unusually quickly, so it was difficult to keep up, let alone transcribe, I'll just go over the highlights. There has been a leveling off of the reduction in COVID cases. Four fitness centers are opening, but attendees are urged to remain vigilant. Over 225 local organizations have signed on to the We Are Covered program. 16,000 items have been checked out from the Arlington Library. 66 temporary outdoor seating arrangement applications have been approved. Over 24,300 meals have been served over the past several months. The special guest, Lisa Fikes, Executive Director of Volunteer Arlington, acknowledged the help received from a wide variety of local sources, as well as from Arlington County employees, who she said are often doing two or three jobs. The food distribution help from county residents has also been gratifying. There is a COVID-19 community care website for people who are seeking volunteer opportunities. There are supply needs, virtual tutor needs, personal support needs, and more. There's a new program called Voluntweet, where people can help promote various groups. People wanting to volunteer should still go to volunteerarlington.org. An event was announced for Tuesday, July 14th, an Arlington Cares session, a virtual event. Unfortunately, as usual, this is not a lot of lead time, so by the time of the regular broadcast, it will have already gone by. Then they took questions. Dr. Ruben Varghese said that six feet distancing and face coverings are still in force. Everyone is still safer at home. He reminded everybody of the analogy of Phase 3 gradually opening the faucet. He said there was no significant bump in cases since entry. Arlington now has 2,590 cases and 133 deaths. That's as of the morning of the meeting on July 10th. The National Capital Region, on the other hand, had 83,490 cases and over 300,000 deaths. Dr. Varghese's main message also was, be gentle with each other. Phase 2 reversion. A reversion to Phase 2 is technically possible, but the medical community will not be the ones to decide. It was noted that Arlington's infection numbers are lower than the rest of Northern Virginia. To obtain a mask, go to your local group organization. There's also a website with a list of resources. There were questions about the Arlington Public Schools' blended approach to education this fall. The blended approach refers to a combination of in-person and virtual classrooms. The county board is helping the schools with health advice. There's no child care announcement as yet. 
Meanwhile, they will try to facilitate networking. Public Health is collaborating with the Arlington County Public Schools, as they always have done, only more so than usual. There was a note about 15-minute maximum closer contact. What this means is, if you are within six feet of someone for an aggregate total of 15 minutes, the risk is increased. Now note that this is an aggregate total, which means if you're in contact with someone for six minutes and then eight minutes and then five minutes, it is still a total of more than 15 minutes. And so there is a risk there. They're trying to minimize student mingling. As for testing and tracing, Quest Diagnostics has reopened the Quincy testing site. No appointment is needed, but a doctor's order is still required. Arlington Mills site is open. It's a free clinic for the uninsured and the underinsured. They are trying to increase the general availability of testing. They did finally acknowledge the lack of federal help has been a problem but the local people are doing as much as they can. Dr. Varghese noted that low-income people are disproportionately affected due to the higher exposure risk since they often have to work multiple jobs or work in those health care facilities. Contact tracing continues. A question came up as to what to do in the case of having a non-compliant boss or property manager. Jim Schwartz replied that there is a need for everyone to overcome habit and be hypervigilant. Individuals can start by wearing face coverings in the hallways of their multifamily buildings. He did note that simply passing someone while wearing a mask has a relatively low risk of infection. If your employer is non-compliant, then the county will take complaints. If you're a shopper and you see non-compliance at that particular store, they suggest voting with your feet and simply not doing business with that establishment. They also recommend looking for the We Are Covered poster. Katie Crystal also mentioned that there is an OSHA website for working complaints. There were questions from teachers asking about school buses. As far as is known, social distancing also applies on school buses. Masks are to be worn in classrooms. There was a caution to disregard rumors that there were laws against masks in Virginia. Whatever is there has been superseded by current situations. Another question came up about what happens if you test positive? How does the contact tracing work? The first question the tracer will ask is, are you okay? The second question, who do you recall was in six feet of you for 15 minutes or more cumulatively? Third, who else do you know who's positive? From this information, they work out the maximum number of people at risk and then see about sending out messages. A question came up about gyms. They are now at 75% capacity with a 10-foot distance between participants because breathing is intensified when exercising. The same 10-foot distance applies for swimming as well. One interesting quote, We are all at risk, but some situations are riskier than others. A question came up about bad reports from neighboring states like the Carolinas. Dr. Varghese replied that the health principles are universal. The problem is national, especially without federal help. If you travel, continue to take your precautions so that you don't bring COVID back home. He also noted that statistically, tourists have not been the biggest problem. A question came up on the delicate matter of the impact of race on positivity. Statistics did show that blacks had greater fatalities and Hispanics greater infection rates, and that at-risk factors don't go away when the overall numbers decline. The county is trying to put the help in those communities where it's needed most. They declared it is not inherently the race, but the circumstances that determines vulnerability. Racism exacerbates those circumstances. A question came up about Phase 3 in Houses of Worship. 
Dr. Varghese replied that the same principles apply regardless of the published requirements. His personal opinion was that a shared chalice is not a good idea and that gold is no panacea. Dr. Miller still encouraged alternative virtual or drive through non-contact or non-congregate, six feet distance except for close family members. For after-service food, it should be served on disposable non-communal materials. A question came up about positivity rates. Dr. Miller reminded everyone that the charts typically show a rolling seven-day average. There was an increase in the past two weeks for this number, but he attributed it to 1,000 tests administered at Barcroft. The 5.5 to 5.6 percent is in line with the rest of Northern Virginia. The last question came up, if you go out of town, should you self-quarantine on your return? The answer was, only if you believe you've been exposed. If you stayed vigilant throughout your trip, you should be okay. People wishing to advocate for increased testing were encouraged to contact their senator or governor. The message was, we at the board do a lot of work, but often other people make the decisions. In addition, the Arlington Public Schools have started having their own town hall meetings. The county board town hall meetings will be going over to a bi-weekly format, so the next meeting will take place on Friday July 24th. The meeting wrapped at 1.31 p.m. Now it's time for another installment of Out and About, our on-the-ground reporting segment. The intersection of Wilson Boulevard and North George Mason Drive was the location of a well-intentioned hazard on Thursday, July 9th. The hazard consisted of a handful of people holding up large, well-made signs, and gesturing to the passing traffic. There was no problem with the signs that said Black Lives Matter, but other large signs instructing motorists to honk their horns created some risks. The installation was located directly beside the intersection, so it was visible to drivers traveling north, south, and east. A westbound traveler who either stopped at the traffic light or turned right onto North George Mason Drive, could also see the participants. This was observed at about 5.30 p.m., the middle of rush hour. There were two possible dangers. First, a driver might involuntarily react to a horn blast by suddenly accelerating, braking, or swerving. Second, a driver might ignore a horn signal intended to warn them it would have been safer to place the installation closer to the middle of the block of North George Mason Drive in front of Fields Park. Elsewhere, the Friday evening nightlife in Clarendon spilled over into early Saturday morning. The night spots along Wilson Boulevard include Spider Kelly's, Don Tito, Mexicali Blues, Ambar Clarendon, and Whitlow's on Wilson. As of 1 o'clock a.m., the lights were still bright and the music was still playing and many young people were gathered in front of the entrances to these establishments. Some of the conversations seemed loud and intoxicated and a few participants were visibly staggering. More significantly, face coverings were in the minority and social distancing was rare. The eventual results of this combination of imagined invulnerability and the diminished judgment associated with heavy alcohol consumption may become evident by early August. Nearby, it was observed that Clarendon's Apple Store had finally removed the boards that had been covering their storefront. Apple was the first establishment in that complex to put up boards and the last to remove them. The boards appeared to have been a precaution against looting, but a glance into the now-visible showroom revealed that there was relatively little substantial to steal. This concludes our on-the-ground coverage of events in Arlington. And that concludes this week's show. 
We will be back next week with more news from Arlington, along with some on-the-ground observations. Meanwhile, be careful, be safe, and be well. Thank you.